Hey guys, we're going to be checking out the Trinity kernel for the Nexus 5 today. As always, the links are included in the description. I've been using this kernel over the weekend and I've got to say, I've been really impressed with the performance of this kernel. It's definitely the fastest and smoothest kernel I've used on my Nexus 5 to date. Now, there's a few reasons for that. Trinity kernel does things a little bit differently to other kernels. It doesn't use MP Decision and it doesn't use its own custom hot plugging solution like other kernels like Franco do. So what it essentially does is it turns your Nexus 5 into a true quad core device. It leaves all four cores on online. Obviously it still has a governor to actually change the frequency of those cores, but you'll notice it straight away. It's so fast, it's so snappy, it just gives it that extra level of performance. You're probably asking me what kind of effect does this have on battery life and that's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video a little bit later on, so yeah, let's do it. Okay, so if we start off with a mention here of performance and like I said before, this kernel is the fastest kernel I've used on my Nexus 5 without doubt. It just makes opening apps and navigating through the UI that little bit snappier than any other kernel I've used. If we open up System Monitor here, you'll just see how quickly this opens. It's nearly instantaneous. Now, yes, I had System Monitor in the RAM, but still, that was damn fast. You'll notice the four cores of my Nexus 5 here, all online. You can see the frequencies fluctuating at the bottom. These cores will not turn off. Like I said, it makes it a true quad-core device the entire time. If you're wondering about CPU temperature, you can see it here, it's, it's fluctuating around 35 to 36 degrees. I feel it's a little bit hotter than say Franco kernel, obviously we have more cores online all the time, but honestly not by much. And don't forget it still has a thermal throttle in place, so if it does get too hot it will still throttle your CPU, don't worry it's not going to cook your device or anything crazy like that. But yeah, like you can see here, performance on opening applications here is just crazy fast. I haven't seen a kernel that's just this damn quick. Probably and mainly because of those four cores being online the entire time, but you can just see if you're into performance, this is the kernel you're going to really want to try out. In terms of the settings I used while doing this test, I just used the kernel default, so I just flashed it through the recovery and left it as it was. I installed the Trinity kernel toolbox to check out the settings, and there really isn't too much in the way of settings here. It doesn't have gamma control, so you can't actually change the colors or the gamma of your Nexus 5 display. I know that's a deal breaker for quite a few people. What you do have is the minimum and maximum CPU frequencies. By default, it's the stock Google clocks. It may actually be a good idea to down clock the maximum CPU frequency, something maybe down to 1. 1.5 gigahertz because you have four cores online all the time it's still very fast and very smooth and you're going to save yourself a little battery life that way but i just left it on the defaults which is 2.26 gigahertz you still got the gpu control here so you can change the maximum G uh, gpu and the minimum gpu cpu governors io schedulers you can change the voltages and by the way i forgot to mention you can actually overclock all the way up to three gigahertz here that's a risk you can take onto yourself. I'm not going to touch it, but you can see it goes all the way up to 3 GHz. Turnables, you've got the read ahead value. You can turn off thermal throttling and you can turn off certain cores as well. So if you only want it to be a dual core or maybe just three cores, you can turn off a few cores there. But that's pretty much it in the way of options. You can also go straight to the kernel, uh, Trinity Kernel website just by going to the Dare Kernel bit at the end here. Okay, so let's move on to battery life. Now you can see the graph right here. Everyone's usage is going to be a little bit different. I use things like WhatsApp, Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all that sort of stuff. I don't really game too much on my device. So if you do game, you're going to take a little bit more out of your battery life because it takes more battery to game. I was on Wi-Fi about 75 to 80% of the time. So 3G about 25 to 20% of the time and automatic brightness was on and I had my location setting set to battery saving mode. It easily got me through the day because I went to bed at a ridiculous hour, 1.40 you can see there. It lasted me 15 hours 25 minutes with a screen on time of 3 hours 32 minutes. So not the best screen on time I've seen, definitely not. I think Franco Kernel got quite a bit more screen on time but this kernel, at least in my opinion, I've been using it since the Nexus S days, has always been more based towards performance. And it definitely is one of those. It really is a fast performing kernel and the fastest kernel I've used, like I said, on my Nexus 5. Don't forget as well, I was using the default settings and that's clocked at the 2.26 gigahertz um, number. So if you want to save yourself a little bit more battery life, you could down clock that to 1.5 gigahertz and you'll still have a very fast and fluid device because you've got all the cores active all the time. It's still using quad core, whereas other kernels don't. So that could be a kind of a weighing up option for you guys to test out there. It definitely will save you some battery life not running at 2.26 gigahertz. But if you want a kernel that's really based on performance, it's going to give you the fastest performance possible. Definitely give Trinity a shot. If you're one that really wants a lot of battery life, maybe Trinity kernel isn't the one for you. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Peace out.